So for my next video on making a angled banquette to go in someone's house in the kitchen for seating and the first thing I did which is what's laying on the floor is take some measurements and make a template. The template is just going to be help me um, get all the angles proper. So I went over to the house and with some some cardboard and just lined it up perfectly against the walls and made a rough template. So this is going to be built similar to how I do built-ins. So I'm starting with a two by three base. So there's gonna be five compartments and it's easiest to make this in compartments. The two ends are square and the middle sections are the hard ones where you have to start dealing with angles. So I just rough this out. You can see I'm just butt joining these two by fours based on, on the sizes of my template and then screwing this whole thing together and then just making sure it fits on that template. I'll be building off of multiple templates this whole build and if anything I'm cheating to undersized so that I don't have to worry about it not fitting in the space. In order to do the angles I just started using um, a bevel gauge and I'm not great at math so there was a little bit of trial and error here but essentially all of my angles were 30 degree angles. So you could see that I had everything in place and I left the edges long and then I could just trim the edges down. So it was a matter of lining everything up, getting those measurements. You could see I could transfer them to the ends using that bevel gauge to give me um, a guideline and then trimming all the pieces down. So I pretty much built this piece by piece, but once I had that 30 degree mark, everything was 30 degrees. So I could just, like I said, go through, trim those down. So these are going to be my short ends and then fit them to that template. So the front I could have fit in place, making sure I'm lining everything up. And then once those were in place, I can mark and measure for the sides. And this ended up working out pretty well. Didn't really have a ton of problems. And then the sides ended up essentially being parallelograms. So you're, you're cutting your angle um, in the same direction on those side pieces, which will be important later on for building, building the top side cabinets. And then everything fit into place. The one um, drawback I had to this was I wish I would have cleaned up the 2x4s. There is a ton of undul undulation in 2x4s and it would have made life easier to have, have planed them down a little bit. So then for the angles, I had to use clamps in order to screw everything together. Um, this, the angled sections are just essentially just going to be harder than, than the square sections. But with those clamps, I could screw everything together and then just clamp together the front and screw them together similarly to the to the square boxes and I do add middle braces on all of these I don't think I show it in the video just kind of as backup so I would build the box I would build the two sides first and then the middle section I always built last because that could make up the difference of anywhere I'm off on either side so you can see it's the same thing at this point I had the measurements so I could just fit it into place and once I had all of my bottom frame I clamped everything together and connected them with some two and a half inch screws later I'll end up re taking this apart because you could see I haven't leveled it on my floor which is not square so I ended up taking it outside to level it um, to get it perfect because my boxes weren't lining up and then I could start on the tops this is going to be 18 inches high and the top is about three quarters of an inch and the bottom is uh, three and a half because of the two by fours. So you're losing about four and a quarter inches. So I just cut the height measurements to, I think it was 13 and three quarters. So I had three sheets of plywood. I ended up using almost all three. So the first sheet I just went through and made a bunch of strips of 13 um, and three quarter ply so I could just cut it as I go. Now that night after I cut that plywood, I met with the customer and I something I didn't realize as I want was you lose measurements on the angles. They wanted this 18 inches deep. So you could see I had to add shim out and add this inner frame to the piece in order to get that 18 inches. That also means my two side boxes are gonna be over 18, which is fine. So you see those are about 20 and these are now 18 but it was just a matter of, of shimming that out. If you're building something like this, you could avoid that by just making the, the sides longer when you first start. 
and then this is now I'm going to be making the boxes so I have those sheets already cut the square boxes are very simple I'm just making them to to the size of, of the the panel I'm cutting my depth pieces first they're about about 20 inches and then for all of these I'm going to be attaching them with rabbits and dados so it's going to be two rabbits on the sides of those two panels and then I'm going to be putting a dado about a half inch up from the bottom because I don't want this to sit on a, um, the bottom because it won't be perfectly flat so it's only going to sit on on two little feet and then I could cut the rabbits on the edge of these pieces and I'm not using the feather board attachment from my fence because these panels are so small I don't have to worry about them lifting or wrestling them into place so just going through and cutting those rabbits and I'm doing the two side boxes at once so once I had that I could cut the rabbits on the bottom once I had my two side panels I can measure so these are the inner panels cut those and then and cut the rabbits as well so now I have a box and um, I'm skipping order of operations a little bit in this because I've made a ton of videos showing you how I make cabinets and boxes but once I had that I can measure for the bottom uh, accounting for that inset dado and then I could glue these together I put glue on everything and then um, you could see I pre-drilled my my holes there so that I have the whole alignment align properly put everything together and I'm using strap clamp to align these and get them square and then once the strap clamp is in place I could sink a bunch of drywall screws into them the nice thing about this build similarly to a built-in is you won't see any of the outer edges of these boxes so they don't have to be super clean and tidy so then for the angled pieces is where it got a little fun I started by cutting that 30 degree angle in the right width of my pieces which once again is the same as the width of the platform I made and these pieces are parallelograms you could see I'm cutting an angle um, in the same direction on the other side as well so now I have my proper width and I made the two side boxes at once so I'll be cutting four pieces um, and then I made the last panel at the end so then in order to, to shear these up a little bit because I didn't want to use butt joints, I put an angled dado cut on one edge of my pieces. You can see this is where that angled dado cut is. And that allows for that side piece to now sit flat coming off that corner. So you'll have a little bit of a sturdier joint there and everything will line up well. Then on the other end, I'm cutting uh, angled dado as well. But... Um, you could see I flip it so it's on the opposite side it's not on the same side so that when it sits in place you could see there's those two angled dados which now square off the edges and I could just plop straight pieces right in front so this is where I had moved outside and I skipped ahead a little bit I've already cut those side pieces this is basically just showing um, that the, all the angles in the house are a little different which is why I'm building this piecemeal it just makes life a lot easier so once I had this in place and clamped to the front box I found it was easier to account for my spacer already in the front because there's going to be um, false fronts to all these boxes so you could see I added a three-quarter inch spacer to the bottom and that just keeps everything perfectly aligned now my boxes are flush with where they're going to be at the end of the day you could see how the molding will sit on the front of this of this box and then now this this angled piece back here is is perfectly aligned with that strap clamp so this is where I did start taking some measurements because the other one was about the exact same size and then um, so that's once that was in place and and lined up with those front pieces I could measure the bottom the easiest way to do this since all of this stuff isn't perfectly square because of the nature of these angles I just trace that inner edge on a piece of plywood and then to account for my data which is about 3 eighths of an inch deep I had a 3 eighths inch piece of plywood and I'm just putting that on the edge and drawing a line to make it 3 eighths inch wider along the whole piece I could take my skill saw and cut this out since they're straight straight sides even though they're at an angle this was the easiest way to do it and then once I had this all cut out I could dry fit it into my box so obviously the angled pieces are making life 
a little bit harder. It's a longer process. If I was a DIYer and I hadn't had a ton of experience, I would probably make all these boxes completely square. You would lose some storage space, but it would be a much easier build instead of dealing with angles. And once you put the top on this, you won't be able to tell that they're just square boxes um, in the bottom. So that is something you could do if you don't want to deal with these angles. And then this is going to be the same process. You could see I pre-drilled the holes. Since this was already strapped together, I pre-drilled them while they were strapped together. And then I could glue everything together. These strap clamps are such a lifesaver. It really just pulls everything together. And since it was important that these stayed um, in the angles that I needed them to, you could see I set this one up on, on the piece. I made a few adjustments and then um, I screwed it together when it was already set up on the piece so I know that it's perfect. And what I'm looking for in this is that it doesn't overlap my two by four frame basically. I made everything about a half inch smaller than it should be because I've definitely got, gotten some tight clearances on built-ins and it's a little scary putting it in the space. So then for the last piece after I had those two other pieces, I kind of discovered that in order for this to line up, I needed a three quarter inch spacer. So you could see there's a throwaway piece of plywood in between these. If I didn't have that spacer, you could see it would pop out past my um, three quarter inch block on the bottom, which wouldn't work. So with a three quarter inch spacer, it, it kept everything aligned. So I had those clamped into space. I had made the sides the exact same way, and then I could cut the backs. And I didn't actually get any finish uh, photos of those those square boxes this is where that video is going to end so these are um, starting to put this in the space you could see how those boxes look